going uh, with a young, enthusiastic audience of science. Um, we just I, spoke to your partner. He said only good things. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry, don't worry. No gossip yeah, no, over here. But um, we heard a little bit about the work you had done, but why don't we hear from you what you're being awarded for tonight? Sure. Well, um, it concerns the notion that there are molecular machines that assist protein folding inside of the living cell. So um, an experiment we did uh, in the late 1980s uh, indicated that there is um, a, a machinery inside mitochondria that actually mediates folding. And very soon after, it was clear that ring assemblies are all over the place in cells and that they're mediating protein folding using energy currency, so-called ATP. Um, so ATP, we all love it. <laughs> it's, it's necessary. Uh, and it's, you know, it, it, it's utilized to move the machine in such a way that it permits folding to occur. So the, it, it's actually a fairly simple mechanism. Uh, proteins, when they're misfolded, expose sick, sticky surfaces. Mm -hmm. And these so-called chaperones proffer their own sticky surfaces, and they capture, sort of like flypaper, the unfolded protein. And then ATP changes the conformation of the machine. It now releases the protein into a place where it can't aggregate folds in isolation, and then a lid, in the case of the machine that Ulrich and I have studied, pops off and out comes the folded protein. So it's sort of like a jack-in-the-box. That's <laughs> amazing. I love how you're like, it's just so simple, but no. I mean, that is, it's well, a beautifully it take simple take us way. about 15 years <laughs> to sort it out. But, a very uh, complex jack-in-the-box. I'm curious. The, the nature makes very beautiful machines, <laughs> and, and we're lucky enough to have stumbled into one of them. So, Absolutely. Yeah. So there, the concept of chaperones existed before, but it was like in relation to protection from heat, right? That's right. So then what's, what happened? How did you sort of make that connection? Or was it like a coincidence? Or yeah, what happened when it went to you understanding what the other things well, that it did? So, so the idea was that the chaperones are like little crowbars that pull proteins apart, apart. under okay. stress. And we said, well, whoa, wait a second. Maybe the, the, there's something that actually mediates de novo protein folding from spaghetti to a, uh, an active native form. <laughs> And so uh, we said, well, okay, we're, we are using yeast to do a genetic experiment. We have all these mutants. Let's look for a mutant where proteins can get into the uh, mitochondria, but they don't fold, they never fold correctly, and they never become active. And lo and behold, almost immediately, we found such a mutant wow. in our, we couldn't believe it initially. So it took a year and a lot of work with Ulrich before we all really realize that yeah that is actually what's going on but it was cool we were geeking out because like yeah. in university we learn about what you discovered mm -hmm. all the time that it's like it's no it's honestly it's, so it cool we were like, we're, like we're meeting the people who understand like figured out chaperone yeah. proteins I, 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 the last thing we ever wanted to do was torture people with textbook <laughs> material no, no, no. but it's the best so, <laughs> proteins i love i honestly i know it's like not getting swole proteins but i think proteins obviously are so interesting which kind of leads to one of we have two final questions mm -hmm. that our that, audience wanted to ask every that, scientist yeah it was a unanimous him. question that it's a young audience that they wanted to ask and so yeah you look at the world in such a small way. Even when we learn about proteins and like we are so obsessed with them because it's like so complex, the body. And what does the work that you do teach you about the meaning of life? Uh, well, I think it gives us a, a notion that uh, nature co-ops um, things that she thinks she needs to evolve. Um, and I think we, we don't absolutely know why ring assemblies were evolved to mediate protein folding, but... One idea is that, you know, if you were tinkering around with having new folds and new activities, you'd, you know, some of them were, would be hard-pressed to allow the cell to survive. So, what, you know, the protein would get degraded or, you know, it just couldn't really fold spontaneously. And so having a helper around could allow you to a, a little bit more efficiently fold something to reach a form where it might be active. And now the cell survives with a new activity. So it would help you evolutionarily. Also, I, I mean, we probably came from a pretty hot world to begin with, where, you know, heat stress was rampant, maybe. Uh, and so these things might have been used ancestrally to uh, assist folding in the, you know, when we were around in a soup that was pretty hot. And so they essentially help to allow life and our lives to proliferate. Right. Wow. Yeah. We evolved. Yeah. <laughs> so has that, has that learning all that has that changed your perspective on life as someone who who kind of discovered these things and you see how it's working? Like, does that shift the way you think about the world at large? Uh, 
uh, well, it says there are a lot of surprises to be had out there. I mean, one time Linus Pauling was visiting us, and, he, and even Linus, the greatest chemist of the 20th century, said, uh, I never really expected this kind of a machine to be discovered. I thought about these things, but amazing. So, so there's mean, that so was a very nice compliment for us. Do you think that there's, <laughs> and, there, and there will just hopefully be more breakthroughs like this? There'll be more moments like that? as we proliferate as humans. I hope that that happens, and I'd like to see it happen not just in terms of normal processes in the cell. I'd like to see that happen more with disease as well, mm -hmm. where we have an aha moment about how to solve some of these misfolding-related conditions. We have one last question that was wanting to ask. Our young audience cares a lot about climate change and the issues surrounding that, and they're curious, what can we as humans, as people do, uh, to make a difference, to have an impact on this crisis that's happening right now? Well, I think it's something that we all have to take on personally and sort of try to change our lifestyles to be, you know, energy efficient and not um, use up the resources we've got and not, uh, you know, not destroy our atmosphere. And I, I think also we all have to, at this point, be active politically. I mean, we have to lobby politically for... You know, if we don't do these kinds of things now, there's an inevitable direction it's going to take. And I, I think we could, I think people should come to their senses if they can yes. and try to fix this. All right. Well, well thank, thank you so thank much you for so your time. Much. Enjoy your yeah, evening. Yeah, it was really yeah. nice to meet you. Yeah, thank we'll you so much. We'll see you inside. Much. We'll party yeah. later. I'll see you on the dance floor. <laughs>